Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today we're continuing in our series of how to use somatic cell counts to solve utter health problems. In this short segment, I'm going to talk about how to use somatic cell count trends to help identify problems with transition and fresh cows. Now to do this, all you need are the monthly first test somatic cell count data. And the first test somatic cell count data should be for cows that are approximately one to six uh, weeks in milk. So before that is too short, and after six weeks, we're getting a little too long to focus on that early lactation period. The principle behind this is these fresh cows should be healthy. They should have very low somatic cell count. So we should have a low prevalence of subclinical mastitis during this time period. Healthy first lactation heifers should have a very low prevalence because many of these cows should have healthy somatic cell counts of less than 100,000 cells per mL. And healthy older cows should definitely be less than 200,000 cells per mL when they're in early lactation. Now in the individual cow record that we're pointing out here, you can see a very typical example of an animal with an early lactation problem. This particular animal is a third lactation cow and her first test somatic cell count is more than 1.8 million cells per mL. The next month she drops to a healthy level. That's a good indication that she picked up that infection either during the dry period, immediately during the freshening period, or even during her first few milkings. High first test somatic cell count values are a problem because they contribute to increased risk of clinical mastitis throughout the lactation, increased probabilities that these cows will maintain subclinical infections and produce less milk throughout the lactation, and if they maintain those high first test somatic cell counts when they enter the breeding period, you'll likely have reduced fertility. Now, what's a realistic goal for uh, the prevalence of subclinical mastitis in early lactation? Well, we'd like to see less than 10% of lactation one animals um, exceed 200,000, so a prevalence of less than 10%. And we'd like to see less than 15% of the older cows exceed 200,000. The graph that I'm showing here is herd level data of somatic cell counts summarized by stage of lactation and by parity. The purple bars are first lactation animals and the blue bars are the animals in second and later lactation. And this is a very typical pattern that you see um, when you have transition and fresh cow infection problems. You'll notice that the heifers have the highest first test somatic cell count with almost 30% of them um, above our goal of 200,000. And you can see that the cows are just about at 15%, it's, it, it, which is just slightly above our goal. It's not unusual to see a bigger problem with heifers because if they're mixed together, if the heifers aren't separated from the cows in um, the dry, the transition, and early lactation, they often are exposed to the worst bedding and the worst environment. So it's not unusual for them to have a bigger problem than the cows. The consequences of exceeding our early lactation goals for prevalence of subclinical mastitis can be profound economically and for culling in your herd. So we'd encourage you to take a look at those values. Now in our next part of these short video series, I'm going to discuss somatic cell count trends of cows with contagious mastitis problems.